looking to track if somebody is clicking on those phone number links that you have on your website in this video i'm going to show you how to do it and also how to do it only for mobile devices stay tuned okay so let's get started so imagine for for example you wanted to be able to track in your google analytics how many people clicked on the phone number on your website now you wanted to only track the contact information phone number not who not how many people hit the press hit up your press contacts so to do that the first thing we want to do is just make sure we have everything set up properly so we're going to click on the three little dots on the right hand side of your chrome browser we're going to choose more tools and then we're going to choose developer tools okay we're just getting everything ready to make sure we're able to select the information that we need we're going to head into google tag manager and make sure you're in preview mode and the way the way you kind of do that is you hit the preview button on the right hand side and then this orange box will pop up now go back to your website hit the refresh button and then you'll see the google tag manager window underneath preview window underneath okay now on the left hand side are your events these are the events that we're going to be looking out for and on the right hand sides are the tags that either fired or didn't fire based on those triggers all right so i believe we have everything set up now what we want to do again is be able to select how many track how many people click on this phone number not this one, but the one above. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your variables are set up for tracking link clicks. So the way you do that is you click on variables, you click on configure, and then scroll down to where it says clicks and make sure that these elements are all turned on. Now, as you get more advanced, you won't need to have all of these checked on. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna check them all on. But we're really gonna be fo focusing on the click URL. Again, we're gonna be tracking how many people actually click on this button here. So let's exit out of this and then go into our tags. Okay, so we're gonna, again, we're gonna be setting up a Google Analytics uh, tracking code. So we're gonna click on new. Uh, one more thing actually, before I go into that, make sure you have your Google Analytics set up. Uh, there's a video in my channel that kind of explains how to do that in Google Tag Manager, so you can look at that. Um, but real quick, I can just show you when we go through the process. So let's click on new. We're gonna call this a Google Analytics and we're gonna call it a link click, or this is call it clicks. And let's call this a phone number, uh, phone general. Let's just call it phone number and general. Okay, so this is gonna be a Google Analytics click uh, tracking and it's gonna be for a phone number and the phone number is gonna be the general. It's always a good idea to have a consistent uh, nomenclature uh, running in your in your Google Tags Manager account. So then you're going to click on the tag configuration to set it up. All right, we're going to choose Google Analytics and you're going to choose Universal Analytics. And then we're going to be tracking an event, right? We're going to be tracking whether somebody clicked on something. So again, this is uh, in my videos, I always mention the way that you fill this out is totally up to you. The way that I personally like to do it is for category, I like to call it contact and action is going to be a link click. Then the label is going to be phone number and we're going to call it general phone number. Okay. Again, the value here could be the phone number itself if you chose, if you just so choose. Now for the Google Analytics settings, we're going to use the universal analytics tag that we set up, the variable that we set up. So we're going to choose this one. But if you wanted to, if you didn't have this set up yet, you can click on new variable and then for the tracking ID, you will go into your analytics account. You will click on admin. You will click on property settings and you would insert this, uh, your Google tracking, uh, Google analytics tracking code here. All right. That's all you really need to do. So let's exit out of this. Let's click back on home. Perfect. And then let's go to that manager and exit out of this. And let's select the one that we already created. So everybody, if I mean, if you're at the point where you're tracking links, you should have all of that created already. All right, so now let's set up a trigger. So the way that it works in Google Tag Manager is that an event triggers a tag or a piece of code for it to run. All right, so you always have to think about it like that in, in your mind. So whether it's a link click or, or whether it's uh, somebody... Um, you know, a phone number was changed or anything. Anything that can happen on your website can trigger a tag. So let's go and go ahead and click on triggering. And then now we're gonna create a trigger. So we're gonna click on the right hand side, click on the little plus button. 
and they want to create a trigger. So we're going to do this. It's going to be a link click and it's going to be a phone number and it's going to be the general phone number from the website. So let's click on trade configuration. Now you'll see the option here for clicks and you'll be able to choose, uh, choose either all elements or just links. So all elements really can track a tr uh, click trigger anywhere on the website, whether it's a link or not. A link trigger will only actually trigger when you're actually clicking on an actual link. So that would be like navigation items, a button, a image that has a link associated with it, email link, phone number link, any of those links. So we're going to want to make sure we choose just links. Now, when you get to this particular screen and you just start reading it, you realize that this says this trigger fires on all clicks or some clicks. Obviously, we don't want to, to fire the trigger. We don't want to say that, you know, whenever somebody clicks on the home button, that that's that somebody actually clicked on the phone number. That's not doesn't make any sense. So you're going to make sure that you select some link clicks. OK, once you do that, you'll be pr prompted with this next option. This says fire this trigger when an event occurs and all of these conditions are true. So let's open that up and see what the options available to us. You have click classes, click elements, click ID, click target, text, URL, custom screen size, Google Analytics settings, and so on and so forth. Now, because we're just more concerned about the click itself, we are going to kind of be concentrating on these options. Now, the way that I like to la track phone number clicks is by the click URL. And let me explain to you why. Let's go back to the website and select the element selector within the Google Chrome um, developer tool. And then let's click on the phone number. If you look here, you'll notice that this is a very unique uh, link. Now, if, you're so, if you just want to track how many people clicked on, the, on that phone number overall on the website, you just take the, the, the address of the link, which will be TEL, colon three oh five one two three four five six seven and use that as the link and then that would track anytime anybody clicks on that phone number specifically now you can be more detailed you can give this link id you can give this link an id and say contact page id and put the phone number and then in that instance and you wanted to track how many people clicked only on that link you will select the click id but that's not the way that we're doing it we want to track just anybody that clicked on that phone number, whether it's on the contact page, on the home page, it doesn't matter. We want to make sure that that's being tracked. Now, we're not interested in tracking the press contacts. So if you were to go here into your Google Tag Manager and select a click URL contains TEL, right? Because you're looking at the link, this would track not only the 305 number, but it will also track the 888 number. And if you look at the link specifically for 888, you'll also notice that it also starts with TEL. So both of these were triggered. Okay, but we want to be specific. So we're going to choose that specific phone number and then we're going to input it in our trigger. So now let's recap what we did. This trigger fires on some clicks, some link clicks, when the click URL contains that telephone number. But we want to be more specific, so we're going to choose equals. So in the click URL equals the phone number. Let's hit save and let's make sure that this is actually working. Hit save one more time. And now both our tag and our trigger has been set up. Hit refresh, make sure that everything is new. Go back to the home page, hit the refresh button. And then you'll know that you're looking at the new one. If you see now tags not fired includes clicks, phone number, general. Now, why did the tag not fire? You haven't clicked on anything yet, obviously. So before we click on this phone number, uh, let's click on the phone number underneath. Okay. And on the left hand side, you see that the event link click happened. So let's click on that to narrow down on that specific action. You'll notice that none of the tags fire in particular, that this one still didn't fire, which is the desired outcome, right? We don't want that to happen. So we go, when we click on that trigger itself, you'll notice that it says click URL equals the phone number did not occur. So that's a good sign. Now let's click on the other phone number. Go back to now to the new link click uh, event. And then you'll see that the tag did fire. And when you click on that on that trigger, you'll realize that now it has a little green checkbox saying that everything is good. 
So now let's go to analytics just to confirm that things are being tracked. We're going to click on the home button, real time events, right? We're tracking events. And then you'll notice here that the trigger did occur. It says contact category. It was a link click. And when you look at it, it says phone number general. So everything is looking really good. So that's really, that's really all you need to know, right? That's all you need to do to track phone number clicks. But let's take it a little bit further, okay? So let's say you only wanted to track because when you're on a desktop, right, you're not really able to track whether somebody clicked on, um, if you clicked on the phone number here, I'll show you a perfect example, right? Let's just say we clicked on this. It says open, pick up an app. There is no way to really call anybody in your desktop. So you, you may want to trigger only, you may want to trigger this tag only when somebody's on a mobile phone, right? So how does that work? Well, the way that we could only do it, like real, the only real way to do it is to look at the, um, at the screen size that somebody's using, um, that somebody's using to browse their website. So let's go back to Google Tag Manager. And this is a little trick that I've learned and I use it all the time and it's great. Okay, so let's click on variables and then let's click on user defined variables, hit new. And then let's call this custom and we're gonna call it screen size. Let's choose variable configuration, click on that. We're gonna be running custom JavaScript and this custom JavaScript, basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna, it's gonna identify the size of the user screen. Let's click on that. Now in the bottom of the video, in the video description, I'm gonna be post this code that you can use on your own Google Tag Manager account. I found this somewhere online. It's basically everybody takes credit for it, so I'm not sure who to credit, but let's paste that into the custom JavaScript area. And basically what this tells the screen, the, the code or the tag is that if the width of the screen is 768, then label this mobile. If it is 1025, label the tablet, anything else is a desktop, okay? Now this phone number specific, these have a lot to do with your code and what your specific breakpoints are. So you are going to know, need to know a little bit of code in order to be able to identify that. Consult with the web developer if you're not one, so he can be able to tell you the different, um, I guess, screen points that they're using for the website. In our case, or in my case, I typically use 768 and 1025. So let's hit save. All right, now we set up the custom screen size. Now let's go back to the trigger and let's modify this trigger a little bit further. Let's click on that and then let's click on the trigger configuration because we want to make sure we change that. Now what's the next, what's the other event that needs to happen? What's the other variable that needs to be in place in order for this trigger to happen now? So let's click on plus and choose, well, if the screen size, so the custom screen size must equal mobile. Right, it must equal mobile. Let's hit save. Where did I get that word mobile from? Let's go back real quick, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Let's click on variables. Let's think of screen size. Here is the word that I'm referring to: mobile, tablet, or desktop. Let's hit save. Hit refresh on the screen. Go back to the website. Hit refresh. Now, as you know, note I'm running the browser in desktop mode. So technically, when I click on this button now, on this link, it should not work. So let's do that. And let's look at the link click event. And you'll notice that the tag now this time did not fire. When we click on the trigger to identify why, you'll notice that the screen size did not equal mobile. So everything seems to be working well. Now, how do we test this for mobile devices? The easiest way is in Google Developer Tools, you're gonna see a device toolbar here. And this now is gonna give us the mobile side of the website. Now you can ignore this. This is the tag manager stuff. For, for the time being, we won't need to worry about it. Let's just refresh the page, make sure we're looking at the newest one. And now we're gonna click on that button or that link click. Okay, it fired. We don't know what happened. Let's go back to our desktop mode just so we can get able to debug things a little bit better. And you'll notice that now the tag did fire you'll notice here now that the custom screen size does equal mobile. So perfect, that's exactly what we want. Let's go back to analytics to confirm, and here it is. Finally, you're gonna wanna hit the submit button to save all the changes, hit publish, click continue, and you're done. 
I hope that was very helpful. If you liked the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell in order to support the channel. And uh, I would love to bring you more in-depth tutorials such as this. Thank you so much.